Yo, what's up? It's Team TMS Ardor. We're back with another video. This time we're going to change it up. Today we're explaining Sub Saharan Africans, mainly West Africans and the genetics. Quick disclaimer this video is not to discriminate, but it's to educate. If you're offended by the most littlest things, then get off this video. All we talk about in this video is genetics and science. So even if you get offended by that, then just click off this video. Quick disclaimer. We are all part of the human race and we originated from Africa and then we migrated to other parts of the world. If you want a whole video on how the human race started, then I can make that. Well, I think that disclaimer was not enough for some of you people. I'm going to say this again. I am not a racist, and if you are a racist, if you are a white supremacist, black supremacist, brown supremacist, Asian supremacist, I don't care, then get off my channel. I am warning you right now. So as soon as someone mentions race and you get offended, just click off this video. This video is not for you. I don't see colour. I see everyone as people. So, just wanted to make that clear. Right before we start, if you'd like to talk about muscle growth, testosterone, even genetics, then go join my free Discord server. We discuss things. And it's just a good community for like-minded people. Let's get into the video. Now, let's talk about what sports do black people dominate, right? First of all, the most obvious one, sprinting. The fastest man alive, Usain Bolt. But you might say, oh, but he's Jamaican. What I'm trying to say here, right, is West African descendants. And a lot of Jamaicans are West African descendants, right? The 10 second barrier, right? So many black people destroyed that barrier, right? I think it was 70 up until 2003 when an Australian Aboriginal, right? And that's if you don't count him as black here, yeah? he beat it. And then in 2010, a white guy did it. So only one white guy and 70 black guys. So you could see how much they dominate sprinting. My channel's about muscle building. Think, look at bodybuilding, right? Lee Haney, eight time Mr. Olympia, tied with Ronnie Coleman. That he's also eight time Mr. Olympia. Then Phil Heath, and you might think, oh, the world about Arnold. Arnold is not the greatest bodybuilder of all time if you're considering just Mr. Olympias, right? He had six, or was it seven, Mr. Olympias. But Ronnie Coleman and Lee Haney had eight. Also consider people like Jay Cutler and stuff, Chris Bumstead nowadays. So bodybuilding is more mixed. It's not completely dominated, right, by black people mainly West African descendants, but bodybuilding is a bit more mixed. There's Europeans in there, there's sometimes Middle Easterners in there, even Asians, everything, right? Basketball. The NBA are notorious for being dominated by mainly black people, right? And you might say, oh, though, it's just because of the height. Black people are not the tallest race in the world on average, right? On average, it's actually Europeans. So, based on just height, Europeans should be dominating NBA. So clearly, there's an athletic advantage there. Nate Robinson is five foot nine and he could dunk like it's nothing. Over 73% of people in the NBA are black. And what does basketball require? It requires power, it requires speed, athleticism, how high you could jump. These are all fast twitch muscle fiber sports, right? Same as sprinting, how fast you could explode from your feet. Boxing, right? In boxing, of course, there are legends that are not black, right? There's actually a lot. But when you think of boxing, when you think of the legends, what do you think of? You think of Mike Tyson. You think of Muhammad Ali. You think of Sugar Ray Robinson. George Foreman. Evander Holyfield, right? And of course, modern day MMA. Kamaru Usman, fucking beast. Isra Adesanya, Nganu. Known for his fucking punching power. I think he's the hardest puncher in the world. Knocking out people like it's nothing. We've got DJ. I can't say his name, so I'm not going to fuck it up. We got Anthony Johnson, rest in peace, but he was an amazing fighter. As you clearly see, black people dominate fast twitch muscle fiber sports. And this is not no coincidence. This is not because in the culture they're just training more, right? There might there might be a little factor to that, but the main reason is genetics, and I'm going to get into the specifics in this video. East Africans, West Africans are a little bit different, and I'll explain it. One thing people don't talk about is the diversity in Africa, right? People say, oh. Africans are fast, right? That's like saying Europeans are fast. Which Europeans? Is it the Albanians? Is it the Romanians? Is it the Polish? Is it the French, right? People forget that Africa is a continent, not a country. And you could ask any biologist, geneticist, whatever they call them, right? The most diverse people are in Africa. In fact, there's more 
diversity in Africa than there is in the rest of the world combined. Imagine how big the world is and just Africa, there's more diversity there. So that's why it's no question that you can find all types of people there. The shortest tribe in the world is in Africa. And guess what? The tallest tribe in the world is also in Africa. So people saying black people have good genetics is like saying Asians and Europeans have good genetics. You got to be more specific. Let's say someone from Germany, someone from France, they are both from Europe. So technically speaking, they should be the same, right? But they're not the same. They're different. People say Germans and then people say French. People say Romanian, right? But for some reason, when it comes to black people, a lot of people just put them under black people. That's why we see some black people, they have crazy muscle genetics, right? And then some of them have shit muscle genetics. Before I get into the reasons, I just wanted to make that point. Another one, and it's the main reason why West African descendants have the most fast twitch muscle fibers and they dominate a lot of sports, especially bodybuilding, right? And that is natural selection. In case you slept on your biology class, let me explain what that is. It's where one organism or living thing that is more adapted to their environment are more likely to survive. So they survive and they pass on their genes and the people that are not adapted to the environment dies and they can't pass on their genes. So eventually it comes to the point where the people that have that genetic mutation or adaptation, they pass on their genes and they keep on reproducing and their kids pass on their genes and they keep on reproducing and eventually they all have that gene to survive and the people that didn't have it dies because they couldn't produce offspring. For example, giraffes have long necks so they could fucking reach for food, right? That's why giraffes were adapted to have long ass necks. But the giraffes with shorter necks won't be able to reach the food. So they won't be able to eat and they will die and they will not be able to pass on their genes. So those giraffes will go extinct. Giraffes with the long necks that will be able to reach the food and feed themselves and be able to procreate, those ones survive. And eventually all giraffes will have long necks. And what does this tie to people mainly in West Africa, but still all around Sub-Saharan Africa? That's because of malaria. If you don't know what malaria is, imagine a mosquito bite, but just, it's fucking fatal. It could be fatal, right? It's horrible, and the worst cases of malaria, yeah, it's all in Africa, right? And mainly in West Africa. And I'm going to explain why that plays a crucial role in them having strong genes, right? When you get the mosquito bite, it goes into your red blood cells. And I don't know the exact science, but... If you have less hemoglobin and more case of sickle cell, which is usually not a good thing to have less red blood cell, in this case, it's a good thing because malaria won't be able to spread that much, right? There was natural selection where the people that didn't have these cases, a lot of them died off, unfortunately. They weren't able to survive the malaria, but the people who did was able to survive and pass in their genes and make children and their children make children. And eventually, a lot of people in Africa, especially West Africa, had more cases of sickle cell and less hemoglobin. And you might ask, how does that got to do with fast twitch muscle fibers? Having less hemoglobin and more cases of sickle cell makes you fucking dominant in fast twitch muscle fibers. People in the West Africa region, like Nigeria and Congo, have the best muscle building genetics and the most fast twitch muscle fibers than people in East Africa where there was less malaria. So that is a big reason why a lot of Black people, especially West Africans, are fast twitch muscle fiber dominant. And that's why a lot of East Africans are more endurance based. They can run marathons. They are built for that shit. I can make another video on East Africans, right? This is not about East Africans, but they were not adapted like West Africans are to survive in malaria and stuff. So the places with the most malaria also came out of the most fast twitch muscle fibers. Another thing, myostatin. The most myostatin deficiencies you see is generally in West Africa. Myostatin is basically like the enemy of bodybuilding. It makes us stop putting on so much muscle and obviously for a good reason, right? I'm gonna show you a picture right now. You see, this animal <laughs> does not have much myostatin at all, right? We can't, us humans can't just get massive, right? But some people have myostatin deficiencies. That's why you see children who have a six pack and like big shoulders and shit when they haven't even hit puberty. That is all myostatin deficiencies. And the opposite of that is follostatin, which makes us build more muscle. And in West Africa, generally, there's the most cases of myostatin deficiency and the most follostatin, right? 
because that's another reason why they build more muscle. Another one, this is the one of the biggest reasons why black people run so fast. It's a gene called actinin-3. And actinin-3 is basically responsible for making you powerful and explosive and fast. Right, this is not the strength gene. This is for explosiveness. And if you have the XX version of the gene, that means you're going to be more endurance based. You're not going to have explosive power, right? If you got X from your mum and X from your dad, then you're going to be more of an endurance based athlete or whatever. But let's say you got the C allele, right? Let's say you got X from your mum, C from your dad, right? Then you're going to be somewhere in the middle. You can still be explosive and fast, but you're not going to be as fast and explosive as the people with the CC allele. C from the mum, C from the dad. Right? Those are the ones that you see on TV, the most explosive, fast, jump high, sprinting speed. Those people most likely have the CC version of this gene. And black people have the most cases of actinin-3, right? And who has the least cases of actinin-3? Unfortunately, it's Asians, right? Doesn't mean all Asians don't have actinin-3, the good version. And it doesn't mean that all black people have the good version of the actinin-3. And same as everything else I said in this video, right? It's just on average. You could find Asians that are fought very fast and you could find black people that are slow. Lastly, androgen receptor sensitivity. I always talk about this in my channel. Basically, if you don't know what that is, testosterone doesn't even matter if it doesn't bind to the androgen receptor. When it binds to the receptor, it takes place, it works, right? But if it doesn't bind to the receptor, then it's useless. And black people on average have the highest androgen receptor sensitivity. So more of their testosterone gets used, it's more efficient. Let's say, for example, you have 50 testosterone molecules, right? As a West African, on average, let's say 40 of them gets into play. But let's say you're an Asian, a South Asian, maybe on average, 20 gets into play, 25, right? So you have the same testosterone, but it just doesn't get used because your receptors are not that sensitive. You can change this with foods, and I'll make videos on it, but there's also a big genetic component. But the bad part about having very sensitive androgens is prostate cancer your risk of prostate cancer goes up it's like when this goes up when androgen receptor sensitivity goes up prostate cancer risk also goes up so it's a double-edged sword right that's why in black people one in four eventually get prostate cancer in their in their life they have the highest rate of it so there's downsides to everything so yeah that has been the end of this video if you enjoyed if you want me to make more videos on genetics and maybe other ethnicities you could comment down below i'll make more videos on them make sure you check out my other videos on testosterone how to build more muscle and i'll see you in the next video bye